So we have this simple mechanical problem here in which there is a block of mass. Uh, let's suppose a mass M which is lying on top of some kind of an inclined plane which has an inclination of angle let's suppose theta or a wedge or something like that. It's a very simple mechanical problem and uh, the, what the question asks is that there are going to be angles at which the block will not slide and for angles greater than a particular angle the box uh, the mass will start sliding in the downward direction so find that particular angle that critical angle at which the block starts sliding and once the sliding happens find out the acceleration so if the motion is going to take place in this particular direction what is the acceleration once the motion happens now a very simple way to approach problems like this is the newtonian approach in which we basically look at the different kinds of forces that are involved and once we figure out the forces that are involved whenever there are imbalance of forces there is going to be motion in that particular direction and in that particular direction we can apply the Newton's second law. So let's look at the different kind of forces which are involved. Obviously the most important force that acts here for the this mass m is its weight which is going to be directly in the downward direction. So this is going to have a weight of mg. However, since the block of mass is restricted by the plane, it cannot move directly downwards but rather it is going to move along this particular line or here I have drawn this particular axis okay so it is going to move in this particular axis so there is going to be a particular component of force which is going to act in the direction of the x-axis let's suppose uh, also one more thing to clear up is that even though uh, the mass is sliding with respect to the inclined plane the inclined plane itself is at rest so let's suppose that this inclined plane wherever it is situated is at rest and it is not going to be moving and we are looking at this particular motion from the point of view of a laboratory frame of reference in which this inclined plane is at rest and is not going to move now because we need to make sure that this is an inertial frame of reference otherwise the Newton's second law is not going to work here. So this is an inertial frame of reference which is the laboratory frame of reference in which this inclined plane is at rest. So one of the important forces is the weight which is acting directly downwards but since the object is restricted in the downward direction it can only move along the x-axis or maybe in the y-axis so we are going to look at the components along the x as well as in the y-axis. So we can also find out the components along the y-axis here so the y-axis is going to have a component in the downward direction also so to do that we can say we can look at this particular triangle in this particular triangle you have a theta so this is 90 minus theta so if this is 90 minus theta the opposite angle is also going to be 90 minus theta and in this particular triangle here this angle will be equal to theta so you can figure out from the geometrical construction that this angle is also theta so if this is theta then this component will basically be equal to mg cos theta and this component in the x-axis will be equal to mg sin theta. Now of course the object is not moving along the y-axis so that means the forces are balanced. The forces are balanced because this component is equally balanced by a reaction force let's suppose which is known as n. So there is no motion along the y-axis. It means that the forces are balanced that means the reaction force n is equal to the component of the weight in this particular direction mg cos theta. So this is one equation of motion all right let's suppose this is point number one. Now again there is another force which is involved which is the force of friction. A friction always acts in a direction opposite to the motion. So if the motion is happening in the downward direction then the friction is going to act in a direction which opposes that particular motion. So it is going to act in this particular direction and the way friction is defined is so the friction F is basically equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the reaction force which is N in this case and N is obviously equal to mg cos theta as I already showed. So this is mu mg cos theta. Let's suppose this is point number 2. So let's look at the motion in the x axis now. So if you look at the motion in the x axis motion is only going to happen whenever one of these forces mg sin theta is greater than f. If mg sin theta is equal to f there is going to be no motion. If mg sin theta is greater than f only then there is going to be motion. So mg sin theta minus f represents the net amount of force which is acting on this particular body. Okay. So this net amount of force is going to lead to some kind of an acceleration of the body. Yes. Then in that case we can apply the Newton's second law. So this net force is nothing but equal to ma. 
So if I write this as uh, uh, this is equal to ma, now I can focus on uh, uh, this particular equation here. Now there are two cases, as I already told you, for angles which are less than a particular limit, then there is not going to be any sliding motion. So let's suppose the angle is so low that the motion is not happening or rather the motion only starts to happen so that the acceleration is very very small. In that case, so I can say that let's suppose the body just starts, just barely starts sliding, okay, just the moment at which the body starts sliding for a particular angle. In that case, let's suppose the acceleration is near equal to zero. In that case, this equation will basically become mg sine theta minus f is equal to ma or f is nothing but mu mg cos theta. I can write this here mg sine theta minus mu mg cos theta is equal to ma as I already told you it is just starting to slide so the acceleration is near zero so this thing I can write this as zero here so this here this becomes mg gets cancelled and you're left with sine theta is equal to mu cos theta or mu is equal to 10 theta so the point or the uh, condition at which the motion the sliding motion just starts to happen is basically given by mu is equal to tan theta. So the angle at which the tan theta of that particular angle is equal to the coefficient of friction is that particular critical angle at which the motion is going to happen. So if the angle is less than the critical angle, there will be no motion because of friction. The friction will be greater than the uh, uh, or equal to the uh, this comp force component. And if the angle is greater than that particular critical angle, only then sliding motion will happen. So if let's suppose this is this is the critical angle. All right, so this is the condition for critical angle or, or theta c. Let's suppose this is theta c. So when motion is happening, acceleration is uh, having some value. All right, so in that particular case, I can again represent. So this is the main equation. I can again use the same equation here. So mg sine theta minus f, which is nothing but mu mg cos theta is equal to ma as simple as that so in this equation m m m gets cancelled and you're left with a is equal to g sine theta minus mu g cos theta so this is going to be the acceleration of the block of mass once it starts sliding along a particular inclined plane having some kind of a inclination of theta okay or you can also write this as a is equal to g sine theta minus so mu is nothing but 10 theta c multiplied by cos theta that's it this is the solution so the block will start moving only at a critical angle of mu is equal to 10 theta c and once this motion starts happening in that case the acceleration is simply going to be given by this particular expression